On the line with us, the Dean of Radio. In fact, he's got his own website, deanofradio.com. Dean Obadala, the host of the Dean Obadala Show, weekdays 3 to 6 p.m. on Sirius XM Progress Radio Channel 127. He's also a columnist with the Daily Beast, and a lot of his stuff gets picked up over on MSNBC's website as well, including his most recent piece, the GOP's long embrace of anti-Muslim hate. Dean, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tommy. You're the dean of radio. I that's just my name. So I'm not the. It's not. I'm not the dean of radio. My website is deanofradio.com. And by the way, you just say that Tom's going to be on my show tomorrow night. So this is sort of a cross promotion, like there you home go. and home series or something along those lines. So yep. thanks for having me on, Tom. It's always great to chat with you. Back back at you, Dean. Thanks for dropping by. So, so sure. lay out this uh, scenario for you, for us. Uh, how is Lauren Boebert's um, making jokes about Ilhan Omar, uh, the Somali refugee, Muslim, a black, uh, 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 American member of Congress from Minnesota? How is Lauren Boebert, the you know the the white gun nut from Colorado, making these jokes? Unique. What is what is different? What is, what how you know how how does this fall outside? the realm of what we have traditionally considered normal and even beyond the pale for what we consider crazy in, in the Republican world these days? It doesn't. I mean, Lauren Boebert is not an outlier. She is the manifestation of today's GOP. She, is, she will raise money off this. She's going to get more popular among the Republican rank and file. And I say that because, first of all, it wasn't just this joke by Boebert. She, as you probably know, has been for months smearing Congressman Omar saying in writing, in her tweets, calling her a terrorist sympathizer, saying she's a uh, spokesperson for Hamas, smearing Congressman Rashida Tlaib, the only other female Muslim member of Congress, saying she's also part of the jihad squad simply because she's Muslim. But you've got to take a step back, as I know in my article. Anti-Muslim bigotry became weaponized by the Republican Party beginning in the 2012 presidential election. And it was done there by Newt Gingrich and Herman Cain, saying Muslims want to impose Sharia law. Like, we want to post Islamic law, which is laughable. They were just projecting, because we're seeing what they're doing right now in, in Texas, in the case tomorrow, in, before the Supreme Court in Mississippi, imposing their extreme religious beliefs as a law of the land and oppressing women. But the point is, since 2012, they've been demonizing Muslims. That's part of their, po part of their platform, essentially. 2016, Trump took it to new heights with saying things like Islam hates us, saying Muslims, we knew where the terrorists were, and we weren't turning them in, and, of course, calling for his complete shutdown on Muslims. And he made Congressman Omar a very frequent target of his attacks because she's black, she's an immigrant, she's Muslim, and she's a woman. Don't forget, Congressman Omar is the woman who hit Trump's crowd in a North Carolina rally chanted, send her back. The idea of sending a black woman back to Africa made the base so happy. And Trump is suggesting her and other women of color should go back to their home countries, despite that the others were born here. It didn't matter to them. They were, they're, they're of color. They're not Americans. So look. What Bobart did, completely mainstream GOP bigotry. That's where the party is. I just hope Democrats use this in 2022 to define the GOP and ask Americans, do you want these people running the House of Representatives and showing Gozar, Bobart, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Madison Cawthorn, and the fact that Republicans refuse to denounce it, which in my view means they approve of it, they're complicit with it. And it works for them. I mean, you know, the, does, yeah. generally speaking, politicians do things because they work. They don't do things because they're irrational and, and just bouncing off the walls. And, and, you know, there's a large white majority in the United States. Um, it, we have a, a rather sordid past with regard to, uh, to say the very least, with regard to the largest genocide in the history of the world, the, the genocide of Native Americans, with the, the essentially Holocaust of, of African Americans for, you know, 400 years. Uh, slavery and Jim Crow and and you know that continues to this day in many ways, and and the 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 thing that I'm having trouble with and and um, just don't know what to do other than just calling it out, but mm -hmm. is that there are so many white people in this country who are voting race first. You know, it's it's like race above all else. There, it, it's it's yep. um, you know the last time a Democrat won the White House with the, with the majority white vote was Lyndon Johnson in 1964. I yes. Mean, you know, it, it, it's go true. Ahead. And there was a study uh, early, about 2015, 2016, the New York Times had a great article about white identity politics. And they tracked it. And they showed that polling in the mid-2000s, they asked white people, 
how important is your race in terms of voting? At that time, at least there was no admission of it. It was statistically insignificant. It was almost nothing. Flash forward 2015, a third of white Americans, a third of, of all white Americans said their race was important to them and how they voted. Why did any politics is now in full force on the GOP side? And I think it's because demographic change is real. And there's a sense of tribalism based on race now. And that it's because of Trump, but not just Trump. Republicans have pitted white people against black and brown and immigrants over and over and over again. And it's really taken hold. So we're dealing with a GOP party that is, I think, at this point, proudly white nationalists. They are team white. And they want all white people who view everyone of color as a risk or a threat in the zero-sum game scenario to join them. You know, but don't forget, over 40 percent of white people did vote for Joe Biden in, overall, men and women combined. So it's not like they're not getting all white people, but they are getting a majority of white people, of men more solidly and then women as well. And we have to deal with this. And calling it out for the bigotry it is is something I think important for even if it won't move them, it, I hope we'll get people on our side more worked up to vote because, well, as we know, it's turnout in a midterm election. We need to give people our own form of red meat, not based on lies and bigotry, but based on the truth and making clear here are the stakes. You've got a GOP. Well, that's and a I think there's a larger issue here, Dean, and that is that in a country, a country that has a multitude of races and religions and it, but is held together by the common belief in democracy, which was at least the ideal of the founding of this country. Um, and I, I would say every generation we've inched a little closer to that ideal. Um, that, you know, we, we were the first country in the world that was arguably, again, I, you know, I, I, I know all the cynical responses to this, but nonetheless, sure. we were the first country in the history of the world that declared that we were based on an idea and not on our DNA. You know, and, and mm -hmm. in, increasingly you're seeing democracies you know, taking that on, you know, that I'm, I'm British not because, um, you know, I'm white, but because I, I believe in the ideals of this country. Uh, I'm American, not, not because I'm uh, white, but because, or I mean, I, arguably the only people who could actually mm -hmm. call themselves Americans are Native Americans or, or Hispanics. But um, this idea of a, a pluralistic society, uh, it, we haven't seriously talked about this in, in a long time in the United States. And yet, on the other hand, you've got the, the white nationalists out there just getting enormous amounts of publicity, promoting their ideas, promoting their hate right. on their own channels, on right-wing talk radio, on, you know, uh, uh, it, it just, and, and it's tearing this country apart. It's just tearing this country apart. Hey. We are at some point going to have to decide, do we want democracy or not? Because we're yep. not gonna change the racial composition of the United States. And, and uh, you know, I, I think Texas is the real bellwether in this. Texas is no longer a majority white state. And yet, no. all the levers of power, or virtually all the levers, levers of power in that, in that state are controlled by mostly white people. There's there a smattering of right. Hispanics, but increasingly, and, and now we've got you know, several hundred Spanish language right-wing radio stations, talk radio stations mm -hmm. all across the country, and they're popping up in Texas like weeds, and you know, it's, it's shifting the Hispanic population in that direction too. Well, Tom, to your point about Texas, just briefly, you know, they got two additional congressional seats because of increased population. Well, what the, the, the state is only 39% white right now. It's almost parity with the Hispanic communities right about there. These two new seats they design are both white majority districts. You know how hard it is in a state that's only 39% white to, find, to create two new white majority districts? Yeah. That takes surgical precision, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, it, it is a contest between democracy, a pluralistic society, and going to what they want, which is a, a white nationalist. Christian I think you could call it ethnocracy. Perhaps. And, and certainly religion's a part of it. I mean, the case yeah. tomorrow before the Supreme Court on the Mississippi law, banning abortion 15 weeks, including rape and incest, this is all based on religion. This is, that's what they want. They want to impose their religious beliefs on the rest of us. And I keep telling people, there's only two results when you're dealing with these kind of fascist movements. It's either you let them rule you or you stand up and fight them and hopefully win. Right. And I don't mean military battle, I mean politically here. And we have to get more engaged in 2022. We can win if we come out and we don't need the complete same turnout of 2020. We need a really good turnout. We can win. We can hold the House. We can take a Senate seat or two. It's up to our base. Can we get our people out? And I'm hoping they see the stakes that we see right here. It's not a normal election, not normal times. It really is the 
the question of going forward as a nation, as a democracy, or this autocratic movement headed by a guy named Donald Trump or another white nationalist, the future. Right, and there's no shortage of them. I mean, you know, they're they're standing no. in line over on the Republican side, and, and it's it's yeah. uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a very very dangerous time for America because uh, you can't have an ethno state and a democracy, uh, at least a highly functioning democracy, at the same time. In 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 my opinion, I mean, you know, it's um, I don't know. Anyhow, Dean, thanks thanks a lot for the for the thanks. Uh, for I'm talking to on my show, my friend. Thanks yeah. for being on. I appreciate. I'll make sure you here tomorrow. It. Yeah, okay, we'll talk to you soon. Dean Obadala, the great Dean Obadala. Deanofradio.com is his website. You can hear him on right here on Sirius XM Radio 127, channel 127, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Fridays.